In this video I'm going to look at the transition element question from the 2017 paper 1. So the first part of the question you had to fill in the five question marks where you gave the formula for the products of those reactions and then you had to specify the type of reaction for reactions 1 and 2. So if you want to have a think about that, pause the video and then go on when you're ready. So we'll start at the top. So if you add HCl aqueous to that pale blue solution, the hexaacyl copper 2 plus, you're going to get CuCl42 minus. Then moving across to that pale blue precipitate, if you add aqueous ammonia to a hexaqua ion, you're going to get the hydroxide precipitate. So in this case, you're going to get copper 2 hydroxide, which has the full formula like that. And I think you can get away with just putting CuOH twice there instead. If you then go and add more aqueous ammonia to that, um, copper is one of the hydroxides that dissolves in excess aqueous ammonia. And you get the deep blue solution, which has that formula there. And then the final reaction at the bottom on the left hand side. If you add aqueous Ki to the hexaqua copper 2 plus, that white solid, so if it's got no colour, it's going to be copper 1, so copper 1 iodide, and the brown solution is going to be aqueous iodine. So what happened in reaction 1? We've got ligand substitution, and reaction 2 is a redox reaction, and that's because the copper has been reduced from oxidation state plus 2 to plus 1. The iodine has been oxidized from oxidation state negative 1 in Ki to 0 in I2. The next part of the question gave you all of this information on the heating of a hydrated salt and we had to work out the formulae of A through to D and show the 3D structures for the optical isomers of C. So if you want to pause the screen, have a look at all of that and then play on when you're ready. So I'm going to start with that information there. So all of that uh, mass data from the crucibles I'm turning into a sort of equation. So A was heated to make B and some water. So all the water of crystallization is driven off. And it, it comes out that 8.297 grams of A was heated and we got 7.433 grams of B and 0.864 grams of water. So because we know the MR of B and water, we can work out the moles, so we'll do that. So the moles of B, mass over MR, 0.024. Moles of water, mass over MR, 0.048. So you can see there's a 1 to 2 ratio between B and water. So all that's telling us is that the hydrated salt A has got 2 moles of water of crystallization. So we're going to feed that into the formula for A when we're ready. Then we're going to move on to all that percentage composition data and do an empirical formula calculation. So there's my atoms. So there's the mass over MR or percentage over MR, which is going to give us these moles here. Divide by the smallest, we get 1 to 6 to 6 to 24 to 2. And then add that up and work out the MR of the empirical formula. And sure enough, it comes out at 309.7. So from that we can say that the molecular formula of B is that. So we're going to focus on the formulae now. So I've just transferred that information. The anhydrous salt B has got that molecular formula. And I'm going to focus on this piece of information first. So I think the best way to do it is get the formula of the bidentate ligand sorted and then go back and get the formulae of everything else. So if we've got three molecules of bidentate ligand D, in cation C, then they obviously are those carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen atoms. So we know that we've got three bidentate ligands. There's the atoms there in the molecular formula. So that must mean that the bidentate ligand D is that one there. So we can go to C now. So C is the cation. Now it's going to have a two plus charge because if you remember, We've got two chlorines here, they're going to be chlorides, and so therefore cation C is going to be that there. So that means that the anhydrous salt B is going to be this with the chlorides on, so it's going to have that formula there. 
and that means that A, with its two water of crystallizations, looks like that. And finally, we need to show the 3D structures of the optical isomers of C. So just put up C up there as a reminder. So how do we draw that? Remember, it's six coordinate. So we draw nickel in the middle with our empty octahedron on. So I'd have the two dashed lines going back, the two wedges coming out, and then fit those three bidentate ligands around there. And it's absolutely fine to do what I'm doing here, the sort of skeletal formula as long as you get your connection um, to the central transition metal ion right. So I'm going from that nitrogen, obviously, to the nickel. And then, obviously, all we need to do is mirror that on the other side.